Uh, my name is Clay Robertson. I'm going to be your instructor today, and we're going over Fleet Tackle 101. Uh, this is going to be about a half hour class. We're going to cover uh, Fast Tackle with a focus on uh, medium to large scale fleet engagements. And uh, we'll be going over uh, fitting, fittings and strategy and tactics and uh, above all else, how not to die. This is a by special request from Shattered Armor, make my tackle not die. We're going to try to go over the meat and potatoes of this class in about uh, about a half hour. Um, and I'm happy to take the time for any questions while I'm going through this presentation. For larger questions, I suggest trying to save them for the end just so that I have time to expand on them uh, adequately. But for any questions on clarification, um, I'm more than happy to take the time to clarify something that I say while I'm going through the slides. So without further ado, let's get started. So uh, first we'll go over why interceptors are the best uh, uh, fleet tackle ships, and then some fitting theory, hopefully not too much fitting theory. Um, then fast tackles roles in a fleet, followed by manual piloting tactics, and then roles for alts while multiboxing and then time for questions. So why interceptors? So lots of frigates have similar speed to interceptors, right? So the Dramiel is uh, faster than a lot of uh, interceptor configurations. The Garmer is a similar speed, but has an even better point bonus than a fleet of interceptors. Why interceptors? Because interceptors have a, uh, to my knowledge, completely unique uh, bonus in that they have a sig bloom uh, from my warp drive reduction as part of the interceptor skill. It's 15% per level. And uh, I have a graph here showing a few different uh, damage applications for uh, from a fleet ret retribution, similar to what Horde flies around our space. Um, this is actually our fleet retribution fit. Um, and this graph will show how their damage applies to various fits. So we see 153 at the top there is the uh, is the, an ideal target, and they would apply 128 to a slasher, and then if you upgrade from a slasher to a uh, to an interceptor with a T2 MWD and a medium shield extender, you'll drop down to 64.4 uh, damage with NTs 5 or 85.7 damage with NTs 4. Um, and as you change your fit to have less and less signature radius, the damage goes down even farther. 35 with uh, a medium ancillary shield booster instead of a medium shield extender. Um, it, when you change the micro to dead space, it gets even lower and lower and lower. Um, and so the point here is that signature radius is super important to keep really low in a situation when you're taking a lot of fire, which interceptors inevitably will take aggro. The objective is to not die when you take that aggro. So by upgrading from a slasher to a, um, or sorry, uh, check the, the Dramiel. I actually called out the wrong number earlier. A Dramiel will take 85.7 DPS where a stiletto will take around 20. Um, and so, if a uh, shield extender is used, as opposed to a another tanking module, shield extenders have a sig bloom, a, and what's worse is it's a flat sig bloom, uh, not a percentage based. So that hurts a lot on a low signature radius ship like an interceptor. Um, so here we have the top graph is uh, retribution damage versus a medium shield extender uh, stiletto. One below that is a faction shield extender. Below that, we, we change the micro, and at the very bottom, at 10.9 damage, is a medium and solar shield booster uh, interceptor. Um, so the lesson here is that um, though medium shield extenders are definitely the meta and always have been for tackle receptors, it's very debatable on if they're actually the best, because though it gives you um, more EHP and gives you 1200 raw HP, uh, an ancillary shield booster doesn't bloom your sig and will actually give you slightly more effective hit points if you live the 20-30 seconds it takes to cycle its nine cycles that it has. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, another note here on the uh, the significant improvement from uh, having interceptors 4 to interceptors 5. Um, it's really a very valuable skill to train. So the conclusion from the last three slides is that 
interceptors are the best fleet fast tackle ship type uh, because of that in the what we inevitably do when you fly fast tackle in a fleet is you're buzzing around a large enemy fleet and you have to be able to not die when they shoot at you and still be close enough to be able to either currently be tackling them or be close enough that you can dive in for a tackle at just a couple of seconds notice. Um, uh, the second cl conclusion is that Interceptors 5 is a strong skill. And the third is that uh, given how effective Sigurdias reduction is, a medium shield extender fit is a tough sell, in my opinion, versus a medium and solar shield booster. But more on that in just a moment. So a little more on fitting here. Um, so in my opinion, two hard requirements for a fleet scepter is to have at least one tanking module besides your damage control, and to have dual point. You can try to run a single point. I've done it before. It just it doesn't feel good. Um, you you want to have a scram and a long point. They're both really useful. If you're going to take up uh, space as a, as a tackle pilot, I think it's pretty important. Um, so fundamentally, we have four options for, for tanking modules, either buffer armor, uh, active armor, buffer shield, uh, active shield. Um, buffer armor doesn't make sense because it's plates and they hurt your speed and inertia. Uh, active armor, I argue, doesn't make much sense because it really sucks your cap dry. Unless you can make the fit work to that, so that you're not capping out by like the third or fourth cycle of your small and solar armor repair, I just, I don't like it. It, it. it feels so bad. I welcome you guys to try to fly it on a malediction or an Aries or something, but oof, I don't like it. Um, so that leaves shield extenders and insular shield boosters. Um, shield extenders are great if you need buffer, or especially if you're a newer pilot um, to tackle, shield extenders are a great option. And uh, otherwise, I argue that the insular shield booster, the medium insular shield booster that is, is the best option. It just takes a little bit of practice to get used to, um, because your your overall your ship will fly the best um, with the medium insular shield booster. Uh, slide. So if we accept that dual point and either MSE or MASB is, is accepted as a requirement, then throw in the micro, that's four mid slots. There's only four, there's only three interceptors that have four mid slots. That's the, the stiletto, the raptor, and the crow. Slide. Uh, the stiletto is my favorite. It's a very popular option. Um, true with Minmatar typicality, it's, uh, has a very, it's very fast, very agile. Um, uh, the other two options are the crow and the raptor. The the crow uh, is a, a fleet-focused interceptor like the stiletto. It is slower by about 300 meters per second, uh, cold, with um, you know true to Caldari typicality. Um, but it is tankier with uh, because of its 10% uh, per level shield HP. I think that's a frigate bonus, a uh, Caldari frigate bonus. Um, so 50% more shield HP, um, so it can be quite nice if you want a medium shield extender configuration or you want to put some, some missiles on it because it has quite a lot of fitting space for missiles. Um, so that can be a good option um, if you want to do a specific fit uh, in that way. And the Raptor is a combat scepter, not a fleet-focused scepter, uh, according to CCP. Um, it is still a strong ship in a lot of ways. It's slower cold than the Crow of the Stiletto, but it's faster hot because of the uh, micro drive overheating bonus. It's about 8.85k with max skills um, with a T2 micro drive, I think it is. Um, so it's a very good tackle catching platform if you want to outfit an interceptor to be specifically good at catching enemy pass tackle and being, being able to kill them yourself. Uh, and so moving on. Um, so I'm not going to go over all of these notes here, but there are a handful of modules that are super strong on uh, on interceptors. Uh, so uh, interdiction nullifier is a high slot that'll let you slip through bubbles. Um, the ionic field projector is a rig that'll increase your targeting range, which will allow you to uh, point from longer distances and more importantly, start locking a target sooner when you're diving them from a long range. It can oftentimes be like a second's difference in um, how soon you can lock up uh, and point a target, which can sometimes be very, very important. Um, hyperspatial rigs, probe launcher, uh, using a custom probe setup, you can make tacks by launching probes into a, an array on your grid, like a thousand clicks off of you, and then you just right click save location, and it lets you make tacks on the fly. Super useful. Um, Nosferatu's, afterburners, uh, generally speaking, abyssal mods, um, some cheap abyssal mods can be very strong uh, if you, because 
you can oftentimes get away with things like high capacitor requirements or high power grid or CPU requirements that makes them cheap, um, but they have like a strong sig bloom or um, speed bonus. Um, stay away from armor plating for obvious reasons. Um, it's, armor plating slows you down. We don't want to be slow. Um, excessive bling, like pace yourself on the bling. You know, let it scale with your skill and how rarely you die, or not rarely. Um, don't gimp your fit to allow for for more weaponry. Your focus is to tackle, not to do DPS uh, for most fits. And um, cap boosters are sometimes a tempting option, but you don't have enough mid slots to spare, so don't do it. Um, that's all the time I'll spend on that. We can come back to that later if need be. Um, if you're getting into interceptors just now, uh, good skills to train. So start with racial, racial frig five and then interceptors four. Uh, racial frig five, I recommend Minmatar, so you can have the stiletto. Um, then do your navigation skills, then interceptors to five, then navig navigation support skills to five. That would be my suggested path. Um, I beg, your, beg your guys' pardon, I haven't called my last three slides. Blech. Um, please advance in your slides until you get to the uh, Z kill uh, Z kill page slide that shows my Z kill. Uh, so just gonna go ahead and uh, point out my um, significant amount of lost mills for interceptors here. Uh, I've been flying interceptors for a good while and I've lost a lot of them. But my point with this slide is that you're gonna die often when you start because it's easy to get caught out when you have like two and a half K EHP. But you get better over time. So that on the on the right, this is my you know my kill board from the last couple of days. Like I lost one interceptor and I got like tons of important tackles. Um, lots of ships that are pretty dangerous haven't died since then. Like you just you stop dying after a while and then that's when you can start putting bling on your ships and you can be even stronger. Um, Especially when you're out with a fleet, uh, it's important to like not die. That's something that comes with comes with practice. Um, so that's just to encourage you guys to like if you're if you're new to it and you're you're dying some, like don't worry about it. It comes with time. Okay, so that is, concludes our section uh, slide. By the way, um, that concludes our section on fitting theory. Um, does anyone have any outstanding questions uh, for something that I missed on fitting theory? Um, so the, we're going to now get into our section about fast tackles roles in fleets. So this is more of a strategy focused discussion. And then our next slide is going to be uh, more tactics and how to do uh, specific maneuvers. Um, so we're going to cover a few of these bullet points here. So uh, typically there will only be two to five um, fast tackles in any given fleet. The largest of fleets, uh, if, the, if you have more than five fast tackle, it's oftentimes the FC would probably rather there be less. Um, it's just not a role that you want to get bloated, but the people that are in the role, it's important for them to be valuable. Um, so when you're not literally tackling things, you should be making use of yourself by scouting, um, following enemy fleets, because you can do that safely, um, providing warp ins for the FC by moving around on grid. Um, you can be very, very valuable as a fast tackle pilot if you make use of your downtime. Um, uh, I'm going to add a, a bullet point here just for not dying. Um, it's important to stay alive by understanding what's a threat to you, when you can engage, identifying where the enemy fast tackle is and how fast they are if they can catch you. Um, it's something you should have in your head as you play fast tackle is I need to try not to die here or if you are gonna die make it worth it make it make it a, a momentous moment um, so we'll move on here to uh, so catching stragglers is an important thing so say you're skirmishing uh, on a grid here and I'm gonna there you go. so uh, here's your here's our fleet right here right and we're moving along this way and there's an enemy fleet here and they're they're kiting us, right? Um, I don't have, not everybody's in the Discord, are they? How many of us are in Discord? A lot of us. Uh, I'll try to limit my uh, my Discord discussions for, for the moment, but I'll, I'll just finish this quick example. Um, so uh, if our fleet is chasing an enemy fleet on a grid and they're trying to pull range, okay? So fast tackle is gonna be somewhere like here with about you know, maybe 30 
clicks between them and the enemy fleet. And at some point, they may try to warp off, right? Uh, at that, once we see them starting to warp, while we were holding range because we were fearing their scrams and getting caught, this is the point where we dive in, right? And try to point uh, ships in the fleet as they're leaving. This can really punish a fleet for trying to reposition on a grid. Uh, if you grab one or two of their members and they get roasted after the after their fleet leaves them, it can really bleed a fleet dry after if they do this two or three times. Really strong thing to do. Um, oh, espionage. Uh, so moving on from that, um, another strong role. Uh, in a fleet is to uh, intercepting enemy fast movers. So fast tackle, uh, dictors, etc. cetera, uh, different ships that will try to kite uh, the main body of a fleet. Um, use the different ta tactics that we're gonna talk about on the next page to try to catch them. That's part of your job. Um, you, uh, excuse me, punishing enemy fleet for warping off grid. That's, uh, well, I suppose another, another way you can catch stragglers is like when they're burning through a gate and you're chasing them. Um, you decloak at the last second and catch somebody as they're warping off, right? It's, not, it's another important uh, role that you can fill. Um, as you're chasing a fleet, you can point or scram the enemy anchor, typically a long point if you're interested in staying alive, or if you, it absolutely has to happen, you can dive in for a short point. The, that oftentimes means that you're going to die, um, which is in stark contrast to bullet point two, which says to not die. And this, these are just decisions you have to make on the fly. Um, generally speaking, when you don't know, try to err towards not dying. But if FC says make something happen, sometimes you just gotta make it happen. Um, another role is preventing bushes. So command destroyers with their micro jump fuel generators that jump ships that surround them 100 kilometers are very dangerous to a fleet. If they land on your fleet, you have an opportunity to dive them and scram them and that turns off their jump fuel generator and that uh, and prevents them from jumping. Very important. And then the last, uh, which I think deserves a bullet point, is drawing the aggro of an enemy fleet. Uh, so what will end up happening a lot is you'll have fleets, especially fleets like retribution fleets, high, high tracking speed fleets. They'll see it, an interceptor 40 clicks off of them and they'll say, nah, -uh, like, uh, I can't let this happen. And they'll, they'll shoot you. But as long as you react appropriately, you're just fine and you're tanking their dps for seconds at a time which in engagements like that oftentimes mean every few seconds that you tank uh, the aggro is another few seconds that one of your ships doesn't die oftentimes fleets like that are just trading based on dps um, so this could be a super valuable thing to do um and so that's our little snippet here on fast tackles roles in a fleet uh, did i uh, leave anything out that anyone has a question over before i move on no? Cool. Then let's get on to examples like that. So moving on to our next slide, which is uh, our manual piloting tactics slide. Um, so first quick note, use your hotkeys for your modules. When you're flying fast tackle, you're going to be clicking almost constantly, trying to uh, change your vectors appropriately. Um, use hotkeys for your modules, learn how to set them up. Um, so maintaining velocity and transversal, our first uh, big bullet point here. Uh, Excuse me while I learn how to use this. So maintain velocity and transversal. So let's do the same example. Here's our friendly fleet. Here's enemy fleet. They're running along um, anchored. Here's the anchor right here. And here we are. Boop, right here. Um, let's say this is something scary, like a retribution fleet. It's an excellent example. Um, so as we're flying next to them, Right? And we are faster than them by about two or three K, but that's not that much, right? They're gonna be able to track us if we uh, just, just fly next to them. Um, so we're flying along, we're flying along, we're not YOLO boxed, and I'm watching my overview and I get YOLO boxed. I know I'm gonna get lit up in about the next one to two seconds. So what I do is I immediately manual pilot, I'll manual pilot perpendicular to, uh, the, to the enemy fleet so as to, instead of flying alongside them, I'm flying down. Uh, but And so at this point, I start taking fire and hopefully my transversal is high enough that I don't take damage. Now, another interesting thing is gonna happen that you need to pay attention to in the next three seconds or so. I'm gonna get to about right here, because now I'm flying down and there they've moved up to be about right there. That is not a dumb question, but uh, absolutely yes. Um, something I, I should have probably put before this bullet point is, um, 
part of maintaining your velocity in transversal is you should always be moving unless you are on a gate. Unless you're, if you're on a gate and you've got your finger on the button to jump through, you are always moving with your prop module on in an interceptor. If the fleet's just sitting still, you're just you're running circles around them or burning tacks or whatever the hell, but you are not sitting still ever. Um, and that's how you don't die. Um, so excellent question. Thank you for asking that. Um, so back to the example. So we're, we're flying along here. They start yellow boxing us. I er, I turn down. I na I'm now perpendicular to them. And then about three seconds later, we get to, the, I'm probably below them now, assuming I turned down and they're still shooting at me. Well, now as this angle pans out, my transversal velocity to them is going to get lower and they're going to start applying to me. So what I need to do, uh, see if I can draw this another way. So kind of a section of this off up here. I am not an artist, so bear with me. Imagine this is kind of looking at it from an angle. Um, I fly it from this way. I turn down, skirt. Uh, so I'm right here and then they're here. And now what do I do? I don't keep flying down. I, I come up and start orbiting them. Right? I, 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 I orbit, but one important detail is you probably are taking some damage, and so you want to start disengaging. So I'm orbiting, but more loosely than I was uh, up here. So I'm pulling some range, but once my transversal velocity starts getting low, I turn and I start uh, coming up this way. And then by the time I intersect them here and I turn again, at this point, there should be a lot of distance here. I don't know if I drew that clearly enough, but there should be like, maybe here I'm like 20K from them. Here I turn and I'm like 50K from them. Here I'm maybe like, hopefully like 100K from them. So I'm spiraling away. It's kind of like spiraling in for a tackle, but in reverse, right? I'm, I'm doing, doing an orbit maneuver, but pulling range as I go such that my transversal velocity never gets too low. If I were to not do this and I just kept on burning down, I might get 70 clicks away real fast, but in the meantime, they're going to have no transversal velocity and I'm, I'm going to get blouched. You, know, you have two and a half K EHP with this ship, two and a half K. You got no room for error. Well, very little room for error. Um, and so th that's how you might maintain your transversal while pulling away from an enemy. Um, on the flip side, if you're trying to maintain transversal while diving in for an enemy, right? So maybe it's more of a, a so classic scenario. Um, here's an enemy ship. We warp in and we're right here, right? Uh, whole fleet warps in, uh, FC says fast tackle go, or frankly, you should already know that that's your job. Uh, you see this guy and it's a hundred clicks, right? Uh, and it's something with uh, turrets that are like medium to long range. And so you know that they're gonna be able to apply to you within at like, you know, 50 clicks, 70 clicks. So you burn the first couple seconds, uh, 20, 30 clicks, excuse me. Um, you're going to be burning straight in. This is where they start yellow boxing you, right? Here's a yellow box. If it's a large ship hole, I keep burning uh, for another second. If it's a small ship hole, like a Kikimura or something, I immediately turn and get some transversal. And that uh, how much transversal I get depends on how good their tracking is. If it's an Oracle, you know, a little transversal will do. And I come in about right here when I'm about 30 clicks off, I set my orbit to 20 K and I circle or seven and a half K and I scram. So that's how you will maintain transversal as you're coming in for a tackle as opposed to, as opposed to going out from uh, getting DPS. Uh, any immediate questions so far? Did I cover that? Okay. Excellent question. I could not tell you what a good transversal velocity number is if I tried. I would honestly have to completely guess. I have no idea. I completely do it off of intuition and practice and just knowing like, okay, I'm th going this fast, uh, this far away, they're going to apply to me about this much. That's because once you try to putting numbers to it, first of all, you're going to have to look at the numbers, which means that you, it's going to take your mental energy off of the manual piloting, which it really demands all of your mental energy. Um, and you have to look at those numbers uh, and then try to do the math. Um, there's probably some good numbers to know, but it's just not part of my um, tactics as a pilot to know those numbers. I just go off of intuition. That's an excellent question though. And frankly, it might be nice to know them, um, but it's all about practice, practice, practice. Um, excellent question. Thank you for asking. 
Um, so we'll come back to more um, like velocity and transversal uh, description here in another couple bullet points, but let's move on to threat identification. Okay. Um, so this is determining what is a threat to you, what is not. So first of all, the biggest threat to you, like in the scenario we were talking about before where you're following an enemy fleet and we're on grid and, and we're running alongside them, biggest threat to you is scrams. Okay, and that'll usually come in the form of an enemy interceptor. Uh, when we're following a fleet um, and we're only, you know, uh, 30 clicks off of them, uh, it's very easy for an enemy interceptor to peel off ahead of us, intercept us, scram, and we die. Um, so if I'm going to be this close, if I'm going to be 30 off, I need to be like, know if they have interceptors and know where they are. If if I don't know exactly where their interceptors are, it's not going to be 30 clicks. It's going to be like 70 clicks. And then if someone peels off for me, I can I can uh, avert from them. Or I can like make my own maneuver, do something interesting, and have time to counterplay. Um, so the biggest threat to you is going to be scrams. Um, uh, so, th so things to watch out for aside from interceptors, obviously like Arazus, um, uh, Lachesis, really is what you'd, you'd find, um, uh, long range scrams like that. Um, and then also, generally speaking, aside from scrams, damage that can apply to you. So we saw our, our graphs earlier on um, damage application from the retributions, and those chips do track well, but there are some chips that apply much better to frigates. So we're going to move up a slide to this graph. Um, this is a graph of damage profiles for uh, different interceptors versus caracals. Uh, as you can see, this is a lot of damage. Even the best interceptors here, we're looking at like 102 damage on good interceptors. Um, this is a dead space, non-shield extended, overheating stiletto with perfect skills, still 67 DPS. So you get 10, 20, 30 of these caracals, you're going to be pretty much volleyed no matter what. The lesson here is with caracals, you just, you got to be careful. We're sitting out at, at here at this range and we're choosing our moment to overheat our prop and dive in to get the tackle that we need to get. It's very difficult to play against caracals. If there's one or two, you can tank it for a few seconds, but if it's a fleet, it's tough. Same thing for Kikimoras. Um, these things are scary, very scary. Look at that tracking. Um, applying like near full damage at 30 clicks um, to any of the of the scepters. It's it's really tough. Um, so that's why you have to be very conscious of what you're diving on, what the enemy fleet comp is made of, and what anti-tackle they have. Um, I don't use specific overviews for anti-tackle or anything like that because I want to keep my awareness for the whole fleet, but that's not a bad idea to do. I know some people do that. Um, so you could set up an overview tab to just have like things that you would be scared of um, as opposed to mainline doctrine ships and logi and caps and that kind of thing. Okay, um, moving on real quick. Um, so uh, exploiting gate mechanics for intel. We talked about scouting and such for the FC. Um, so you can follow almost any fleet with very little fear. Um, almost nobody's going to be running around Nolsec with a, like triple SIBO carries trying to like, you know, get scrams on you as you crash gate. So you can follow, uh, follow fleets through gates. You can, uh, a, a mechanic to exploit is the invulnerability timer. As you come out of warp, you're invulnerable for 10 seconds. You can't be targeted. You, so you land on gate, you, I warped zero on gate. Uh, I'm, I have my finger on the jump button. I'm watching for yellow boxes, but I'm just sitting as long as the enemy fleet's sitting, as long as I can. And then once they jump through, I jump through, and I hold cloak as they go, and I follow them to the next gate, um, utilizing perches where, wherever I can. Um, and mechanics like this, you can exploit to keep eyes on the fleet just constantly, and there's nothing they can do about it. If they just sit on a, a gate after you jump through, you can just crash gate. Um, sometimes overheat your prop if you're scared. If you're a lot of times you can get get away with it without even overheating. Um, crash back through and then crash through again. Hold your uh, hold your invisibility. Um, so that's how you exploit gate mechanics for for intel. We can talk more about that uh, later. And, uh, oh, slingshotting. All right, so here's a fun uh, classic manual piloting maneuver to talk about. Um, so, whoops. What do you do when, okay, so here we are. Uh, we are a, we are a fast tackle. 
um, and we've been long pointed by an enemy stiletto and they're burning an orbit around us at 20 clicks okay uh, so they're burning an orbit around us and they're faster than us they're like a snake dead space stiletto and we're flying a crow because we're sad okay um, so we're, he's running around us so what do I do to get a scram on him right um, so here's what you can do uh, so what you can do is you can first of all burn prop mod on but cold directly away from wherever he is in his orbit so he's burning this way you burn this way this is going to cause him to loop around and do something like this okay so now we have a vector of full velocity this way he has a vector of full velocity this way we then look where he's going he's typically not going to be going straight at you he's going to be still having his orbit command active unless he's a good pilot and he's manual piloting but he's probably going to have an orbit command active which means he's going to be pointing this way right a little bit off we look at him and we manual manual uh, pilot that this vector right and uh, as we gain velocity this way he's already here by the time eve reacts uh, and starts to make him burn this way he we're going to be uh, closing on him significantly and typically if you overheat while you uh, are doing this maneuver you'll be able to get within sc uh, overheated scram range of this guy and you throw your scram on him and now you've gotten scrammed and he's sad does anyone have any questions about that maneuver no that means i explained it perfectly Woohoo! yeah so that is uh slingshotting uh, it's a great tactic for like imperial navy slicers um other things that like to kite you at a uh, long point range but are also quite fast there are things that enemy pilots can do to counter it, um, but it works nine times out of ten, honestly. Like, it works a lot. Um, similarly, this same maneuver can be done when uh, you're engaging an enemy fleet, right? So, same setup as before. Um, here's an enemy fast tackle. Um, we're burning for them. They're burning this way. Um, I don't burn straight. I don't approach him. I don't, I don't do this. Um, I go where he's going to be, and I overheat right here. I overheat, boom, burn, 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 and he's going to pull away, but you can oftentimes catch him, uh, and you can and you can do a scram right here, and that, that lets him die. Um, so that mechanic, if you look for ways to apply it, you can apply it in a lot of creative facets. Um, so something to practice and keep in mind as, as you fly and learn tackle. Uh, Let's see. Yes, you may. What's up? Uh, you buy ships and just start flying. Standing fleet is like the best way to learn ever. Um, so if you have the ISK, you can go ahead and jump straight into interceptors. Once you train like interceptors three, at the very least, just like train interceptors three, put four in the queue and start flying. Um, but uh, even if you don't have that, just straight up, you know, tackle frigate is you know, for the nine days it takes to train interceptors, like just fly tackle frigates. Um, uh, do small roams and that kind of thing. The only thing I would suggest maybe airing some caution on is if there's a fleet and it's a, you know, we're like hurting for numbers or it's an important objective or something and you can either fly like DPS or Logi or a T1 forget like maybe error towards something more useful and then fly tackle in a fleet where you have a little bit of more time and space to like get your bearings um if you're still if you're still learning that's the only time that i would advise caution otherwise just throw it out there and just do your best um there you know like people don't tend to have high expectations for for tackle but that's not to say that there isn't a tremendously high skill cap um, which is nice because that means that we have some room to breathe and we're not stressed but we know that if we if we practice at it and we keep calm and we learn then we'll we'll get really good but yes uh, just um, fit up some uh, some fits um, this is a good time to point out my, my fittings channel by the way uh, clay's NTs, which is linked in the MOTD has my personal um, NT fits that I tend to favor um, if you want to use them as guidelines to draft your own uh, interceptor fits I'd encourage that um, and then just start flying them. Um, and uh, a couple of the points of my last points here uh, 
t kind of ties into that. So I'll, I'll kind of get onto that. Does that uh, kind of answer your, your question? Yeah, uh, be sure to follow me, follow up me with those questions here in like five minutes after we finish the bulk of the material, and then I would love to like expand on that and talk about it more. For sure. Uh, okay, so two more points uh, for the rest of the class. It's so heat management. So overheating is a both a critical part of flying an interceptor and also an extremely dangerous part of flying an interceptor. If you've ever flown frigates and you've overheated your prop cycle for like more than three cycles, you know that it's going to burn out. Right, kind of frustratingly quickly. You can train thermodynamics to, you know, negate this result to some extent, but for the most part, you just have to learn how to pilot around it, and you have to manage your overheating cycles wisely. Um, so the best way to do this is just practice overheating stuff. Practice using overheating while you're flying. How how many times can I overheat my macro warp drive and still be able to cycle my ancillary show booster nine times without burning anything out? I don't know. You just got to practice it. Typically, like one to two uh, micro warp drive overheated cycles is fine, and I can still overheat my points and my shield booster and everything, and that's totally and that all oh, that's fine. If I do three cycles of my uh, micro warp drive, though, there's a real chance that I'm going to burn something out in the process. I might even burn out my micro, in which case I die, or yeah, at least fail. You know, um, and I don't. You don't always have the opportunity to just dock up and and re online it. You know. So you really got to be conscious of what your resources are in case you burn out a module and how quickly your modules are going to burn out and, and take damage while you're overheating. And that's just practice, practice, practice. Uh, and, you know, thermodynamics like four, you know, four is a good level because five is kind of a long train. Um, and then the last point here is managing aggro. Um, so you really do want to act as a as a B, like a, a B on the shoulder of, of our enemies, right? Um, like they're flying or flying along, like I'll be here and then they'll shoot me and I'll like do the spiral maneuver and pull range. So I'm here, you know, like a hundred off. Um, I see them take the yellow boxes off of me as, as they start to forget about me. I move back in, right? Um, and the reason I'm so close, even if I'm not actively pointing someone, which if you're going to point someone while they're on grid, you should be pointing the, the anchor if you can manage to do it, if you have the, you know, um, safety to do it. There's not like a stiletto running at you. If, uh, even if you're not pointing anyone, you want to be close so that if they start to warp off, you can dive straight in and get one or two of them for tackle. Um, and so you just have to try to be playing right on the edge of I'm going to die and I'm not going to die. And that's the challenge of playing tackle. That's also the fun part of playing tackle. Um, these are my uh, damage graphs. So a couple slides for we have rolls for alts. Um, I won't cover them too in depth here, but throwing an alt in something is oftentimes really useful, even just a shuttle. Then you don't care if it dies, but then you can stick them on somewhere and check a gate that you don't, you know, aren't checking right now. Um, put, put them in a logi frig, like a, a meta fit Logi frig that costs like two mil, and you can just hit approach, lock up, and cycle one repair that's cap stable and is just repping you constantly while you're on the grid. It can, uh, depending on the kind of fight, it can be nice, and you just don't care if it dies. Um, command SE links are super strong. Uh, if you could, if you have a, a an alt that can fly a command destroyer, it's great to have your own links because sometimes you know you're either not in range or your fleet just doesn't have links, but they're very strong, very strong to have. Um, and to tackle DPS, like a caracal to, like there's been several times that I've like tackled someone, but the fleet is busy and I can't get anyone to come kill them. So I've got to just like leave this kill. So it's, it's nice to just have some, an alt and some DPS, like a caracal or a jackdaw or whatever. Um, and then if you're really feeling like you can handle the multiboxing, a booshing command destroyer or a dictor. But multiboxing your dictor is very, very difficult, and you, you know, it's very easy to fuck it up and, you know, really screw your fleet over. So, um, I advise caution before uh, multiboxing a dictor. Just make sure you know what you're doing. You're very experienced with dictor flying, and you know, you're you're not gonna screw anything up, or at least you know how to not screw something up. Everybody screws things up. It's just important to know how not to screw it up. I should say. Um, and that concludes that. Um, that is the meat and potatoes of this class. Uh, thank you all very much for coming. We're now going to open up for questions. Uh, and 
uh, if anyone who has somewhere to be, uh, you, you can now you know go ahead and embark, knowing that you you've survived the the class. Um, otherwise, uh, let's let's talk about questions. Thank you all very much for coming.